Imagine a tower as tall as the height of Burj Khalifa, but completely empty. A building without any offices, residencies, and ultimately without people. It may sound impossible to you, but it's not. Welcome to Golden Finance 117 in Tianjin, China, the world's largest unfinished building. The tower you're looking at is 1,957 feet, which is 596 meters tall, and it's been rising from the sky since 2008. The question here is why this massive structure has been built, and most importantly, why was it abandoned? In this video, you're going to discover the hidden secrets of this giant 117-story construction, and you'll learn about how this engineering marvel turns into a piece of unfulfilled ambition. As it comes to reachable height for building users, this Chinese tower is almost the same height as the Burj Khalifa. It's no surprise that the 830-meter tall Burj Khalifa is the world's tallest structure, but when China attempted to keep the record, it seems they never intended to hold it in reality. This is the story of the highest unfinished tower in the world, also known as the world's highest ghost scraper, Golden Finance 117 in Tianjin, China. We can say that China is one of the smartest countries in the world. In the last two decades, China has emerged as a superpower with the world's second largest economy and powerful military. However, the point to ponder is the question we stated at the beginning of this video. How can a country like China make such a foolish mistake in the form of Golden Finance 117 Tower? Let's take a look at why China went for this project and how it never finished. The story begins with the time in 2008 when China was witnessing a record-breaking economic expansion. Cities were rapidly growing and the eager architects rushed to construct the next iconic tower in China. Then, Golden Properties, a Hong Kong-based real estate firm, entered the game with big goals for Tianjin, a large port city near Beijing. They planned to build a 117-story multi-use tower as the focal point for a new central business location. The design was absolutely nothing short of stunning. Consider a sleek, narrowing structure with a unique diamond-shaped pinnacle that would contain a space for a luxury hotel. This was not just an ordinary building, it was intended to be a symbol of China's financial strength. Let us consider the size of this tower again. If you put three Statue of Liberty sculptures on top of each other, you'd be short of Golden Finance 117's height. But this is where things get fascinating. When the development started 13 years ago, Golden Finance 117 in Tianjin was meant to be the fifth highest skyscraper ever built a 1.8 square kilometer premium residential and major commercial zone, approximately eight kilometers from downtown Tianjin. Despite the great statistics, there had never been a single tenant in this building, and this is how it went from a skyscraper to a ghost scraper. And if you've not subscribed to the channel yet, kindly subscribe and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any videos from our side. Just like the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa, which resembles a high slim pyramid with a needle on top, the 117 Golden Finance Tower features a large three-story diamond-shaped top, which would have housed the world's highest observation deck, swimming pool, restaurant, and sky bar. This ultra-rich design included various residential and commercial towers, French and Italian-style mansions, a wine museum, huge gardens, and even a polo club. When we say that the structure is viewed as the jewel in its crown, we mean that. The mixed-use tower, which resembles a walking stick, would feature 128 stories above ground, 117 of which would be hotel and commercial space, with the remaining 11 allocated to mechanical and operational utilities and four levels underneath it. Golden Finance 117, unlike many of the world's tallest buildings, was designed to be livable up to its highest point, without the enlargement of any vanity height that appears to be typical among many of today's biggest skyscrapers. In fact, when compared to other constructions based purely on the highest residential floor, the project would have ranked second only to the Burj Khalifa by a mere half a meter. Did you know that Golden Finance 117 Tower has a height to width ratio of 9.5 to 1? The normal vertical aspect is less than 4, which makes a building's seismic performance reasonable. In the present case of Golden Tower, it's higher than permitted by China's Earthquake Protection Code, making it more vulnerable and providing us with a major reason to abandon the building as well. Interestingly, the structure was built to withstand these forces, despite the lack of any significant setbacks that would have disrupted wind loads. Golden Finance 117, like Malaysia's Merdeka PNB 118, was designed with a perimeter frame made up of tapering mega columns, mega braces, and transfer trusses, 
all supported and tied back to a full height reinforced concrete core, resulting in a nearly immovable structure. However, while the skyscraper looked to be similar to many other rising buildings around China, at the time, it appears that the project had no future from the very beginning. After years of fast expansion, the Chinese government has finally decided to put an end to its excessive lending in the real estate industry. Beginning in summer of 2020, new loan limits for property developers were implemented, and the sector underwent a prolonged period of adjustment that continues to this day. To protect the authenticity of the Chinese property marketplace, prospective builders are not allowed to begin pre-sales on their projects until authorities have inspected and approved the finished product, with exceptions only given to recognized and generally government-owned businesses. Golden Properties was a publicly traded Hong Kong-based corporation that was comparatively fresh to the mainland Chinese market. It had to entirely self-finance the entire 10 billion US dollar master plan and couldn't even start recovering its investment until each building was finished. This placed the entire program at risk from the very beginning. But if the investor could raise the funds and there were no big market disruptions during construction, the rewards would be substantial. Despite this, they moved forward with construction, which began on August 18, 2008. Although the global financial crisis did not crash China's economy in 2008, it did cause it to wobble. In January 2010, Golden Properties paused the work of Golden Finance 117, citing concerns about failing Chinese property markets, as well as significant investments in Europe and the United States. By 2011, the real estate sector had re-established its foundation, and with an asset to liability ratio of about 4 to 1, the company chose to keep working on the skyscraper expecting it to be finished and available for sale as the market approached its next organic peak. Just to explain asset to liability, the liabilities to asset ratio is often referred to as the debt to asset ratio. The liabilities to asset ratio increases the percentage of assets that are financed by debt. The higher the ratio, the greater the financial danger to the company. This was not the end. The project progressed rapidly, but the delayed recovery of global markets in comparison to China left the Golden Group in an especially weak spot. With its asset to liability ratio approaching 1 to 1, the company was practically all in on Golden Finance 117 and badly wanted to finish the project before another economic downturn. After surviving the most severe phase of the global economic trouble, China's stock bubble burst in June 2015 erasing a third of the Shanghai Stock Exchange's valuation in a single month, and instability in the markets remained until early 2016. It appeared to restart in 2018, and hopes were starting to increase, but the Beijing State Construction Engineering Corporation soon ran away from the scene, taking with it all of its company identification. Are there any hidden facts that shift the overall perspective? Well, there could be several reasons that provide us with a different point of view. Firstly, economic inspiration. The skyscraper may have been constructed to enhance the local GDP and property prices apart from satisfying the genuine demand. Secondly, financial difficulties. In 2021, the parent company was delisted from the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, which raised concerns about the project's financial stability from the start. The third point is the safety concern. Do you know that this gigantic tower caught fire once? Yes, in 2020, a fire broke out on the 65th floor of this incomplete building. This incident emphasizes the potential safety concerns of large-scale abandoned construction projects, which frequently lack sufficient maintenance and security. Last but not least, political implications. Changes in local government and national real estate development policy have had an impact on project progress. Well, it is a typical case of desire exceeding reality. In November 2008, China's export growth rate dropped from minus 2.2% from 20%. In October, overall, China's exports declined by almost 17% in 2009. As China's economy slowed, demand for ultra-luxury office space in Tianjin did not meet expectations. Golden properties were struggling financially, unable to finish the project or attract buyers for the area. They began and ended construction multiple times. It's as if you were constructing the world's tallest Lego tower, but kept running out of bricks. But there's more to the story. Some experts say that projects such as Golden Finance 117 were never intended for practical application. 
Instead, they were part of a bigger plan to increase local GDP and land values. Developers could acquire loans and raise the perceived worth of surrounding land by beginning development on large projects, even if the buildings were never completed. At first glance, it feels like Golden Finance 117 failed due to many unfortunate circumstances and a market that favors state-owned companies. But even when it was listed for sale alongside a handful of distinct Goldrum metropolitan assets, it received little consideration and no effort was made to revive it. It had everything that was required of a high-end development designed for the ultra-rich, but the project setting on former industrial land on the outer edges of one of China's second-tier cities meant that its appeal for those who could afford it simply didn't exist. Many critics argue that creating an extravagant property in a secondary-level city like Tianjin was a bad idea from the start because it didn't catch the interest of the elite who were supposed to be impressed. According to the BIM, it was like attempting to build New York's Hudson Yards in the outskirts of Philadelphia. The last hope of seeing Golden Finance 117 completed appears to have vanished in 2018, and the 600-meter-tall skyscraper has remained abandoned ever since. Presently, we can assume that Golden Finance 117 is not just the world's tallest ghost scraper, but there's also a warning to other builders and the Chinese government. After a failure of Golden Group's proposal, officials passed a regulation in 2020 that substantially limited the size and number of buildings developed around the country. The Golden Finance 117 Tower stands as the world's highest abandoned skyscraper, serving as a warning of the instability of human hopes and predictions for the economy. We don't know its destiny, but its story reflects a period of huge dreams and their consequences. There are rumors that the building will be transformed or possibly destroyed, although there are presently no firm plans for its future. Entrepreneurs and social officials face the problem of finding an answer to this huge architecture. So, as we conclude the story of this unfinished tower, which is already the same height as the Burj Khalifa, we are curious about what China will do with this gigantic project in the future. Will China probably demolish the world's tallest and unfinished ghost scraper, the Golden Finance 117 in Tianjin? Also, do you think a country like China could make such a silly blunder as the Golden Finance 117 Tower again? Was it actually a mistake, though? There are so many questions running in our minds. What are your thoughts about it? Tell us in the comments section below. If you love this video, please like it, click the bell button, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Remember to share it with your friends and family as well, and let us know what they think about the tower. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.